I was here for the first MIF, which I believe was six odd years ago in this hall. Very At that point, you were gracious enough to invite me. My presentation then was, there was no gold in the Klondike can at the time. Well, I, I'll get into that. But my, I, my claim was I was going to find all the gold, figure out the story and deliver a gold story to the market in three to four years when the market wanted a gold discovery. Um, I'm delighted here in year seven, finally, to be able to say you're going to see it now. So the building gold resources in the Klondike is uh, the investment thesis here, uh, just as a bit of a background, we're a Vancouver-based company. We operate in Dawson. We, have, we own a property there, which is our base. Uh, the company owns one project, which is the Klondike District project. It's 586 square kilometers in area, and it covers the entirety of the what you would know as the Klondike gold field. So it's basically the size of a small country. Within the plaster mining district of the Klondike, there's been 20 million ounces of gold recovered from gravels over the last 125 years. Um, the, I would say what I call the modern era of mineral exploration, that was the mid 80s up to 2015, concluded that all the gold in the Klondike had been eroded away from the bedrock and had been dumped into creeks. There was no gold, in the, no gold in the bedrock. Why would anybody be silly enough to go look for it? Um, and I'm happy to show you that, no, indeed, there is an enormous amount of gold in the bedrock. And from a, just a, as a company overview, we've, been, in the last seven years, sadly, we've been able to map the lithologies, the structures, uh, and orient them with the origin of gold model. Uh, we've made two significant discoveries that are kilometers long, which I'll show you. And imminently, by the end of this month, I hope SRK will produce the first ever 43101 geology structural interpretation of the Klondike. And within several months of that milestone, we'll be issuing a maiden mineral resource, which is the first mineral resource ever in the 125 years of the Klondike gold in bedrock. Indeed, there is gold and a lot of it in the bedrock. Ah, so I just said that without looking at the slide, I guess, but uh, just as a, that, a lot, so we're going to have a lot of news and a lot of positive news. I, I believe that delivering a mineral resource, actually right now, will dramatically improve our share price and, and valuation and market exposure. <coughs> Um, and so all those technical milestones, the 43101 geology report will give you as investors the, the opportunity to read what we've discovered and documented over the last seven years. The maiden mineral resource, you'll be able to assess basically as a start what we have. And we're planning on the back of that, so it begin in the fall, we do a preliminary economic assessment. Bearing in mind that all the gold in the Klondike is visible, free gold, 20 million ounces have been recovered from Placer sluices, it means this does not require cyanide. The capital cost to extract gold here is next to nothing. And all the gold that we found so far is at surface. So basically, yeah, that's the summary. Now you don't have to listen to me. Um, the capital, capital structure of the company, Klondike Gold, we have 146 million shares issued at 18 cents, which was the other day. It was a a market cap of 26 million. We have $4 million in cash. So the project value today, roughly $22 million value and delivering a mineral resource of some size into this market, I believe deserves a significant re-rate. Uh, there's significant material ownership from, from insiders, including me. I have a lot of skin in the game. I own 5% of this company. I believe strongly that there is an enormous future for this. Uh, management directors, just, just briefly, uh, we have the experience to make discoveries, to take the discoveries from a discovery stage through the steps to delineate mineral resources, to take the next steps to make it into a mine, do the feasibility and the capital exposure as well from Gord and Jasvir to basically navigate the capital markets. We do not lack for access to capital. Um, we've been able to do money raises, obtain money, as much money as we need, and I'm, I'm prudent and fiscally conservative with that. 
Um, but we've been able to do that always at a timely basis. We're in the world-class mining district, uh, the Tintina Gold Belt. I really put this slide up to say one thing. So there's three different orogenic gold deposits in our immediate area. The one, just one that I want to talk about, coffee, was a Kamenak discovery. It's now owned by Newmont. It's been in various stages of permitting because they've been in the doghouse several times for changing the mine plan. Um, from us, for us, it's important because on Monday, this past Monday, coffee deposit got their current permit and they're, they're good to go. And so that's breaking news. They had to do this. They're, they have to use the northern access route to build a, build a road in, and that goes right through the middle of our Klondike District project. Um, and so our access, which is actually fantastic, is about to get better, and their project is going through it. Um, and so, and this is just, we live in Dawson. The drillers leave Dawson, and it's a 40-minute commute to the drill at the Lone Star and Stander Zone. Uh, we have our costs, exploration costs, are some of the lowest in Canada. I'd say they're a little bit higher than what you'd see in Timmins. Exploration cost is cheap. We get a lot done. This map is a significant thing. When I took this over, the, the units were all wrong. And there was no, it's an orogenic gold deposit model was recognized, but there were no faults. You need faults because that's how an orogenic gold deposit forms and is deposited. There were no faults in this map. This is in our technical report. That's a major milestone. We've made uh, as a pipeline of discoveries. Again, in 2015, there's no gold in the Klondike. Why would you look in the bedrock? The first 19 holes we drilled there, 14 of them had visible gold. We've made significant discoveries every year since then. This is what that resume looks like. The Lone Star trend is five kilometers long. There's gold mineralization in drilling soils and rock outcrops across five kilometers. We've drilled one so far. 900 meters of that will be in a mineral resource in a couple of months. Stander Zone, another structurally hosted orogenic gold trend. There's five kilometers of gold in drilling soils outcrop. Much less exploration has been done on that, um, but that is actually better than the Lone Star Zone, um, and we're working to get that up to uh, being able to calculate a mineral resource. Uh, we have considerable amount of expansion. So this is what, like the Lone Star Zone in red, this is our zone of mineralization broadly. That's what it looks like. It's about 1.8 kilometers of mineralized length. That's that red blob of which we're going to estimate about half of that as a, our maiden mineral resource. And then the little blobs on the right-hand side, that's a standard zone. Those two blobs will connect. There's a lot of exploration to do and a lot of drilling. Um, and that's, you know, the next steps to produce a, a greater mineralization, or a greater mineral resource. The gold domain at Lone Star Again, the surface on the bottom left side where it says surface outcrop, the highest grades and the best of it all sits at surface, it outcrops. We can dig that up with a backhoe. Uh, and that's actually what we're proposing to do. So, I mean, we're looking at something that's open pitable, but all the gold sits at surface. This does not, and it's all free gold. It does not take a lot to mine it. We also have, a, like, that. I've only just shown you less than 10% of the total land area within the package. All those thrust faults that run the 50, there's four of them, they run 55 kilometers down the length of the property. Every inch of that is prospective. We have targets all the way down. The one I want to highlight at Gold Run, which is 50 kilometers away down the other at the bottom, um, is basically our, our prospect is, has located quartz veins in a zone of gold mineralization right beside Tex pit and tech from 1990, 1981 to 1998 or 1997 operated a gold mine there, produced 25,000 ounces a year, operated five months of the year. They used a dozer, a loader, and a sluice plant. So imagine that effort and five, five, four to six people. Uh, look at that from the point of view of preliminary economic assessment. That's what we're looking at for doing Lone Star. And we believe that it's going to be, no matter what the resource we calculate, it's going to be very attractive. So in Tech's book, well, the Norm Keeble's book, the gold run mine was the most profitable mine in the history of tech 
period. It has a 60% operating profit every year. Um, so I think that's the vision for Klondike, and I think rather than having it five or ten years out from now, it's happening now and into next year, and all this news is coming right now. And so I, I'm going to make that one point. This has been overlooked for 125 years until now. We've done the science. Jay has been very patient, and you as shareholders probably too, but we've figured it out, and there's enormous potential here for a lot of gold to be found in the coming months and years. So thank you very much, and thank you for investing. <laughs>